Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on bringing us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number 13, or video number 6 on the subset on Maxwell's equations. Specifically, I'm going to solve the wave equation. The previous videos to this are 8 through 12, where I begin by showing you Maxwell's equations and deriving the wave equation. And then the last three videos, what I did was I did the, the necessary mathematics in order for us to solve the wave equation. So if you find that I'm doing something in this video that you haven't seen before, then look at videos uh, 10, 11, and 12. So the wave equation for the electric field is as follows. E a function, let's say it's the one dimensional wave equation. Or, so we're going to get, actually at the moment we'll write it in three dimensions, just bear with me for the moment. We'll write it in three dimensions for the moment. So it's going to be the Laplacian squared of the electric field is equal to mu zero epsilon zero del two e del t squared. All right, so this is the electric field, a function of r and t. So we want to solve this particular equation. And the way we do this is by assuming separation of variables. So we assume we can write the electric field as the product of its two variables, or two functions of the two variables, namely position and time. So I'm going to assume that the electric field is now only in one dimension. So we have e a function of x and t. So it's going to be a function of capital of x. It's going to be multiple, it's broken up into two functions, capital X of a function of small x and capital T a function of small t. So we need to do the second derivative with respect to position and the second derivative with respect to time. So the second derivative with respect to position is just going to be capital X double prime times capital T. I'm going to leave out the uh, this small x and small t, just for convenience. And we can rewrite the second derivative with respect to time as capital X, capital T double prime. So we need to plug th this back into our wave equation. So what we're going to get is capital X double prime times t is equal to mu zero epsilon zero capital X times capital T double prime. And next thing we do is you separate out the variables. And I showed in the previous video that the only way this can this equation can hold if both sides equal what we call a separation constant. And we call the separation constant uh, we call it minus k squared. All right, in actual fact, I'm going to call the separation constant positive k squared for reasons I discussed in the last video. So now what we actually have are two equations. Namely, we have, we have the, the, the x component and the y component, and each of those has the separation constant. So the two equations are going to be the following. x capital x double prime is equal to k squared, capital X, and capital T double prime, mu zero epsilon zero, is equal to k squared, capital T. So what we need to do is solve both of these separately. So when we get capital X a function of X is equal to something, let's say, I don't know, let's say call it A, and capital T a function of small t is equal to something, let's call it small b, then the electric field, a function of X and T, is going to be their product, namely AB. So let's solve the, uh, let's solve the X uh, equation, or the equation which is a function of X. So we need to rearrange this in order to calculate our characteristic equation, putting a coefficient of one on our second derivative. And then we use our characteristic equation. So we, we need to solve this as though we're solving a quadratic equation. So we use minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac over two a. In this case, because we must have a coefficient of one on the second derivative, so that means that that a is equal to one, that b is equal to zero, because we don't have a first derivative with respect to position, and that uh, c is equal to minus k squared. So putting that all together, we're going to get zero plus or minus square root zero minus four times one times minus k squared. So I'm sure you can see now why I used minus k squared instead of plus k squared. 
Now you might think that uh, this is changing the solution. It might change the way the solution works or looks like, excuse me, but it does not change the physics of the solution. So in this case, we're just going to get plus or minus k. So the general solution to our position, or excuse me, to our equation of a function of x is going to be the exponential outside of a cos plus b sine. We know that this equation is a function of x, so we need to plug in x where we see, uh, I suppose, a, a gap. Next thing, we need to note that the trigonometric functions are for the imaginary solutions, and the complex uh, components are for the real solutions. In this particular case, we do not have any, uh, we don't have any exponential solutions. So it's going to be, this is going to be zero here, and this is going to be plus or minus k squared. All right, now you probably can see why I, just, I decided to call it minus k squared. The separation constant is minus k squared, because had I called it sorry, why I call it plus k squared, had I call it minus k squared, they would have changed the sign the whole way through. This would have become an imaginary number here. We would have had i times k, and that means we would have had these cosine and sine solutions, but I don't want to use those. So that means our, our x function, our x solution is equal to a times e to the plus or minus kx. Now, to be honest, I didn't show this in the last, um, the, the last video, but the actual solution capital X, a function of small x, is actually made up of two solutions, namely x1 plus x2. And we have two, we have two coefficients. Let's just call them for argument's sake, c and d. So if you look, in this case, we actually do have two solutions. We have plus kx and minus kx. So we're gonna plug those in, right? So we're gonna get capital X, a function of small x. Sorry, what I should say is we have two solutions and we need to add them. So what we call is this is the general solution, and it's made up of two particular solutions. So any two solutions are called particular solutions, named e to the, namely e to the minus kx and e to the plus kx. So what we have is, it's going to be, let's say, it, we're not even tra keeping track of the constants, so let's re restart or refresh the constants. a times e to the kx plus b times e to the minus kx. And that is our x solution. I can tell you that the the t solution is going to be almost as simple. So let's call it c and d, e to the kvt plus d times e to the kvt. Now where did v come from? Well, we know that the, the velocity of this wave, because it's an electromagnetic wave, is 1 over square root of mu zero epsilon zero. So I had 1 over square root of mu zero epsilon zero, and I subbed that in for, uh, for, for, for v. So bear with me now, I'm just gonna just clean this up. So we have our solutions to the, the we'll say, the electromagnetic wave equation. And what we need to do now is, is analyze them. And I'm not actually really going to do much analysis because I'm showing you, really what I want to show you is that when we say, yes, exponentials are the solutions, well, then you can believe that. So here are our two solutions, a function of x and a function of t. That means that the actual electric field solutions is, a, is their product. So e function of x and t is going to be their product. Now, of course, you can see straight away that we're going to have four components here. Now, to be honest, most of these coefficients, not most, some of these coefficients will go away when you start plugging in boundary conditions. And of course, in this case, I don't have any boundary conditions. So that's, that's I can't do that. So for that reason, I'm just going to take two of the solutions when we multiply their product, and we'll see, see what we get. So we obviously have to multiply each of these together. So I'm gonna multiply eight times e to the kx by the two time, the two time components. I'm gonna keep those. Let's just look at those for the moment and see what we get. So in this case, in this particular case, we get the electric field, a function of x and t is going to be, let's say, let's call the new, let's say like the constants a times c, you know, I'm just gonna call it a because I'm not keeping track of the constants. So it's gonna be a times e to the k outside of x plus vt. And we need to add that b times e to the k outside of x minus vt. Now hopefully this is after ringing a, ringing a bell in your head because you've seen things like this 
we've discussed waves in my tutorials this is a wave going to the uh, left and this is a wave going to the right so it shows that in actual fact the electromagnetic wave equation is exactly that it does that it does uh, permit wave solutions and of course the magnetic wave equations is the exact same the solutions are the exact same all right so from now on when people start discussing these these exponentials, and you're wondering why are they using these exponentials? Well, you know straight away, the exponentials are solutions to the electromagnetic wave equation, and that's why we look at them. Now, the last thing I'll say just on this is, while, while I have you, that fine, we have exponential solutions here, but we could always, we could, we could also have complex, or not complex, we could also have cosines and sines. And they are very important. We call those harmonic functions. And the reason these harmonic functions are so important, and sometimes we write the solutions of the wave equation in terms of these harmonic functions, is that any function you name, any anything at all, let's say it's a Gaussian, e to the minus ax squared, can be made up by adding enough of these cosines and sines by changing their, their coefficients. So what we perform is an integral that looks something like this. something along those lines, depending on what your function is in here. So we get change, let's say, just leave this as an arbitrary function. So we, we add enough of these solutions. We add en Once we add enough of these solutions, we can make any other function in the world. So we call these, because we can make any function using harmonics, we call these a basis. And in actual fact, the equation I've written there is the Fourier transform. Okay, so that's why harmonic functions are so important, and that's why sometimes we write the solution in terms of the harmonic functions. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the box below.